So with that in mind, we come to our final top performer. I'm uh, really delighted to invite to the stage. So a massive round of applause for Daniel Saunders. <laughs> Wow, what a day it's been, everybody. Um, for those of you who were on, who've been on Mastermind with me, um, 11 months ago, I stood in front of you and I bawled my eyes out. So I'm going to try really hard not to do that today. <laughs> so, a bit about me. So, um, in 2014, I made a big mistake and I married a poor farmer. <laughs> Um, but in leaving the property that I owned in Cheltenham, I did do something smart and I bought a small buy to let uh, near the farm. And we were then able to refinance that at some point and that uh, sort of kickstarted our journey. In 2016 and 2018, I had my children, William and Harriet. Um, and I, I've been working in property for nearly 20 years at this point. Um, I was working for a very high end luxury holiday home company. Um, selling and buying, um, sorry, selling and renting luxury holiday homes. Um, so I thought I knew quite a bit about property, but it turns out you don't know what you don't know. In 2019, upon reading Property Magic, um, we discovered that we could refinance our buy to let, and that was the catalyst for our investment portfolio, um, which we started in 2019 and going into 2020. And in fact, we got the the keys to our first um, investment property, which was a conversion to uh, two SA flats uh, about three weeks before lockdown. Um, so that was a real testament to having a really good team on the ground. But I don't know whether it was partly due to those lockdowns. Um, I handed my notice in after maternity leave in, in 2019. Um, with lockdown and, and not being in the corporate environment, I found that I had suddenly become very much a full-time mum and a farmer's wife. Um, and I quite frankly, I'd lost myself. I'd been quite the career girl and that just wasn't there anymore. Um, so what was my why? Well, life was pretty good at home. We were fine, but we had run out of money to do any more deals. Um, we had four properties by this point. Um, and the farm is struggling financially. Um, I think it's the same for a lot of family farms, and this is a fifth-generation farm, so you know there's no way we're going to ever sell it. Um, my eight-year-old son wants to be a farmer one day, as well as a builder, by the way. Um, so, yes, we need to secure the financial security of the farm, um, make sure that my husband doesn't have to work um, every day for the rest of his life, and hopefully we'll get a new roof, hopefully next year. No more, no more leaking roof. So I joined Mastermind 11 months ago and I struggled with strategy and direction. I had shiny pennies left, right and centre and a little bit of imposter syndrome. Because I wasn't being honest with myself, you are surrounded by people who um, you see on the stage at events who are high flyers, high achievers, and you think, yeah, that's going to be me. I'm going to be the next Dan Hill in five years. You watch. And actually, as time goes on, you realize that's not what you want. And it wasn't what I wanted. Um, I thought I wanted a big property business, but I didn't. Instead, I focused on my personal brand, mostly by speaking to people I know and everybody I know who's even remotely interested in property. I've spoken to them. I've still got my head in the sand when it comes to social media, so I really need to up my game there. But I've got myself a VA now who's taking that on board, and we've got our second meeting next week to get started with that. So amongst all of this, I think my main strategy has been acknowledging that I don't know everything, and it's about finding those people that can help me along the way. So always asking yourself, who do you know who? can do the refurb, advising on assisted living, whatever it might be you want to do. So this is our first case study. This came to us because we were telling everybody what we were doing, and this is a distant relation of a relation. Um, it is a two-bedroom detached bungalow off-market. It's a hoarder's house, and I'll show you some photos on the next slide. It's not been touched since it was built in 1953. The seller had gone into hospital before being moved to assisted housing. They had it valued at 130, 
We offered 120, but after speaking to the owner, he wanted an extra 3,000 pounds so he could buy a mobility scooter. So again, it's important to find out what's important to people. So our total money in on this project after an 80,000 pound refurb is going to be 203,000 pounds. But it's only 10,000 pounds of uh, legal fees and stamp duty that we've put into this deal. The rest has all been on private finance. The GDV is going to be 325 and the net profit of 93,000 pounds. Now, I never dreamt I would be coming into Mastermind and flipping deals. Um, but what we found is when we were looking for assets that were going to cash flow, opportunities were coming to us. And those opportunities just weren't stacking as buy-to-lets. They weren't suitable for HMOs or service accommodation. Um, but they made great flips, um, as you can see. I mean, that kind of profit is, is great. These refurbs, we've got a team on the ground from other projects we've done. It's well within our comfort zone. So the ROI, 63%. Uh, learning point on this one, we'll solve the seller's problem. It's a hoarder's house, and we have assisted them with clearing it. No central heating. He had a log burner in one room, and it, it was just filthy black with soot. We started to clear it out. The kids have got involved, and already it's looking brighter and clearer. Um, but, yeah, it was in a pretty shocking state. And then, as time goes on, um, we joined Sell My House Quickly, um, the network there, because we wanted to work smarter with having deals come to us rather than actively trying to look for them. We found um, a, an inquiry from Sell My House Quickly. This is a five-bedroom detached rural property. I spoke very briefly to you guys this morning about some of the learning points on this one. Um, you need to move quickly when these amazing deals come your way. It turns out the reason why these sellers were so motivated is because that there is an agricultural tie on the property, which meant that the sale kept falling through. Now, an agricultural tie means that only pe people who occupy the property must be um, working in agriculture or forestry. Now, the, uh, we were quite close to doing the deal. We had a bit of toing and froing. Um, the property had come on at um, 750,000 pounds. They were reducing the property, the price down and down over a period of nine months, and each time the sale was falling through. Uh, the seller was getting divorced. Um, they were highly motivated, and they were desperate for certainty of sale. Um, it was on the market for 535 and we agreed a purchase price of 420 with them. Now, the day that we had agreed this and we were going to get heads of terms signed, I spoke to them. Um, I sent them a message at half past six in the evening and said, I'll call you in an hour. We'll arrange to come over and sign the heads of terms. Phoned them in an hour. They didn't answer my message. They'd never read my message an hour previously, and the lead went stone cold. Ten days later, the lead reappeared, and I was actually on the beach in Wales with my mum, dad, and two kids, and suddenly my phone went mad uh, from the people in the Sell My House Quickly network um, that this deal was back on, and they were interested in speaking with us again. Quite frankly, I buried my head in the sand because this was a huge deal, very creative, and I just did not know if we can deli could deliver on it. Um, so I, I ignored it for about half an hour, but in the meantime, they'd got hold of my husband, who was out driving the tractors, and was just, I think, completely starstruck at that moment that he had to go and do something. And he, after work that evening, went and got the heads of terms signed and negotiated the final, um, final payment. So why is it so creative? What happened was these owners had been let down... Um, by another buyer. The, the lead had gone cold because they had, um, gosh, sorry, it's incredibly complicated, so there's lots to talk about. Um, they had had a higher offer from somebody else who had promised them that they could complete in 14 days. When the 14th day came, they had packed up their house, they had sold half of their furniture, um, and he pulled out because of the agricultural restriction on the property. 
They had put deposits down to buy various equipment. They're moving on to a plot of land. And so, as you do, <laughs> we paid them £55,000 to buy the tractor, the diggers, and the caravans they wanted. So I never dreamt that in a property deal I'd be buying tractors and diggers, but there it is. That's the creative side of it. So the deal was back on, and we've gone for an option. So we were able to secure those items for them as our option fee. We've got a 12-month option on it. We are now apply for planning to permission to remove the agricultural occupancy restriction. That means um, that basically once that has been removed, and I did my due diligence and research, obviously, before doing this deal, um, once that has been removed in two or three months, um, the value then will be back at its original £750,000. So how to make £300,000 without doing a refurb or a development to have an agricultural occupancy restriction lifted? That's an ROI of 200% or something like that. Um, learning point, ensure, ensure both parties have solicitors that are used to creative deals. And there's a picture of the property. So, um, yeah, what more to say? It is what it is. It doesn't need a refurb on it. Um, a little bit of tartine up maybe when we put it on the market next year to sell. Life-changing. Uh, we've got another deal in the pipeline. We seem to be quite good at bungalows at the moment. This is another bungalow found through a friend of someone down the pub that my husband went to speak to. Um, sale agreed in legals, purchase price 200 This has stopped at the moment because although everything has gone through nine it is a concern that the vendor might not be compass mentis. Um, so we are just getting all of that confirmed. Refurb 25K, GDV 350 Again, another flip, £84,000. Tell everyone what you do. This offer came to us through somebody that my husband spoke to down the pub, a friend of his. Some photos of that one. Again, the gentleman had gone into a, uh, a hospital and then a care home. He walked out of the house one day in an ambulance and uh, never came back. So very much uh, a similar situation with the hoard. We're well, not hoarding, but we need to clear the house for them. So a summary of our deals, um, three deals there, no cash flow, um, but amazing gross profit, which is really going to change our life, and um, a total ROI of 67%. So what's next? Well, quite frankly, I'd like to have a rest. <laughs> I've had eight weeks of extreme stress um, trying to do this big creative deal. Um, but as Simon said to me, a few weeks of stress has got to be worth it for 300k profit. Um, next, we'll fix the leaky, leaky roof on the farmhouse and we'll just keep going. Next year, I'd like to do two HMOs because with that money we're getting in, we need to get some assets and get some cash flow coming back in again. So we're going to reinvest that money and possibly look to do an apart hotel. I'd love to JV with somebody. It's a lonely business. And I don't want to be there on my own, pacing up and down, waiting for solicitors to call on my own again. But the future for the farm is that we won't have to worry about money again. The farm's financial future has been secured. And quite frankly, everybody, the future is ours for the taking. Uh, we've got the knowledge, the community, and the network now. So just go out and do it. Start now. Get perfect later. I can't tell you what a big learning that's been for me. Take the rough with, with the smooth. It's been a tough year for a lot of us for so many reasons. One day can be amazing. The next is really shit. And it might just go on like that for weeks. Um, but there's always a silver lining. Be true to yourself about what you want. I want an easy life. I don't actually want a big property business like I thought I did 12 months ago. Um, so be true to yourself about what you want. Get great solicitors to help you with your creative deals. Start looking for finance straight away. Simon said to us, I think it was in May or June at one of the workshops, he said, you know how he puts his hand in his pocket, he says, guys, guys. <laughs> he says, if you're not feeling things snowball, you're not doing enough. And I thought back then, I was just starting to feel things snowball. So, um, yeah, make sure you've got that finance in place early because if you're putting the work in, you'll have more deals than you can cope with. Surround yourself with like-minded people. 
but stay humble because on the way up, you're going to meet the same people that you might meet when you're on your way down um, and in those hard times. Um, so like Laura says, be kind amongst the community, help where you can and uh, reap the rewards of that. Thank you. Let's hear it for Danielle. Amazing. Congratulations, Danielle. Well done.